Let's start with a quick look at basic sentence structure in Mongolian. Subject plus object plus verb. Compare this with the basic English sentence structure. Subject plus verb plus object. Take the following example to demonstrate this. Ta no mausung. You bought a book. Notice the reversal of the object and verb from Mongolian to English. This basic sentence structure is the foundation of all sentences in Mongolian. With that understanding of basic sentence structure, we can start turning sentences into questions. When constructing a yes-no question in Mongolian, you add a question particle to the end of a sentence. These particles are yo, you, o, and u. They are all functionally equivalent, and they are used at different times depending on the vowels in the last word of the sentence based on the rule of vowel harmony. They all convey the same meaning, which is to express a statement has become a question. For example, using the previous sentence, ta no mausung, to turn the statement into a question, we just have to add one of those four particles. Because ausun contains the male vowel a and ends in a consonant, we use the particle o. Ta no mausno. Again, which question particle you use depends on the vowels in the last word of the sentence. Each particle is matched with its respective male and female vowels. This is a pattern that is present everywhere in Mongolian. Remember that male and female have nothing to do with gender. It is just a classification method introduced by linguists many years ago. Note that when the last word of a sentence ends in a single vowel or a consonant, the particles o and u are used. Examples, awo or unigu. When the last word of a sentence ends with two vowels, then the particles yo or yu are used. Examples, harayo or shireyu. Also note that the particles naturally attach themselves to the last letter of the word preceding the particles. So you do not say av o with the word and the particle enunciated separately, but rather av o with the particle attached to the last letter. A good example of this is the greeting sanbano. It is not pronounced san ban o with the final question particle on its own, but rather with it attaching itself to the n at the end of ban. In other words, sanbano. When responding to a yes-no question, you need to use the words yes and no, usually. These are team for yes and ukui for no. There's another word that is important too. It is the negation word for adjectives and nouns. It is the word bish. It is similar to not in that you use it to express meanings such as not beautiful or not a book. For example, in no mo, is this a book? No, this is not a book. With this information in hand, we are ready to produce simple yes-no questions. It is possible to take a word like av for father and add a question particle, avo, to create a simple question. Is this a father? The word this is implied in this form of question. However, you can also explicitly state this and that by adding the words en, this, and ter, that. For example, in awo, is this a father? Ter awo, is that a father? Some example answers might be, ukui, ter au bish. No, that is not a father. Team, in au, yes, this is a father. You may have noticed that there doesn't seem to be a be verb appearing in these sentences, like English's is, are, am, and be. A be verb is not required in this case, but Mongolian does have such a verb. It is the word ban, as in sanbano. It is not required, and for now we put it aside for later examination. Let's review what we have covered. Mongolian follows the basic sentence structure, subject plus object plus verb. To construct a yes-no question in Mongolian, we simply add one of the question particles to the end of a sentence. Which particle to use is dependent on the vowels in the word directly preceding the particle. We can answer yes-no questions by using the words team, ukwe, bish, en, ter. Finally, here are some examples of usage. In no mo, team, ter nom. Ter shireyu, ukwe, in shuwe. In harandayo, ukwe, harandabish. In utzgu, Team Uzeh.